welcome to the Pacific, not far from home. Basically, I'm on a uh, part of, so all of Oregon's beach is open to the public. We're one of the, I think we're actually still the only state that the entire 300 miles or however long it is exactly of the Oregon coastline is open for public use. There is no private, there is no private ownership. My water bottle is trying to get away from me. There's no private ownership of any beach property in Oregon. So the, the entire coastline is accessible for everyone. And I do believe, if I recall it correctly, that Oregon is the only state in the country that's like that. And it may be one of the few places like that in the entire world to where the entire beach is one giant state park. The area that I'm at today is in Florence, Oregon. And you would call the section of the beach that I'm at Sayusla, that's the name of a river, um, an Indian tribe, Native American, Sayusla North Jetty. To my right, to the south, is that North Jetty. To my left is the north, west is behind me. East is in front of me. Up is above me, and down is below me. For a good part of this video, I'm going to allow it to be a little more silent than usual, other than this yakety schmackety here at the beginning. My setup is at the end of the video. Got you guys sitting on top of a giant tree, I don't know what, but one of the biggest pieces of driftwood you'll find. It's huge. Probably. 50 feet long and it's I don't know how many feet big a lot you know around the circumference I've already applied uh, a tube 2.0 pre-shave I'm gonna start putting this on my face definitely gonna need some some water add need to add some water to it as you saw in the thumbnail and the description of the video I'm using alfine alfine is a Spanish word for at last or finally. I'll put the scent notes right up here. I'll be using the original DOC dual open comb razor from Razor uh, from Phoenix Shaving. I have loaded in it a first use Bolzano. I'm trying to get the wind to work with me here. When I first got here, it wasn't windy. And I should have sat up when I first got here and did my shave, but I played with the dog, Luna. You'll see a little bit of B roll of her at the end of this video. But I have my first use Bolzano in it. I'm using a silver tip 636 Omega. A little dry but let's see how it cuts and this is the ck1 formula i was talking with the newer wet shaver the other day and it got me to thinking that there is some confusion out there for some people who don't know phoenix shaving as well as i do um, ck1 and ck6 the names. I had a guy asking me about that, what the difference was, why it was called six. CK6 is the sixth, the sixth, the sixth version of the Crown King formula. Now, Doug and Fran, they've done, they've made more bases than that. You go back to how to grow a mustache and other stuff they, that they've done, but the Crown King formula, CK1, which I'm using now, that was their first version of Crown King. CK6 is their sixth iteration, their sixth version of the base. 
I've got a mirror down below you. You'll see that in the B-roll. It's very freaking cold. I brought a hoodie, but it's in the car. It was nice before the wind started blowing. If you like vetiver fragrances, you'll love this one. I'll put the scent notes back up here. While the first note is rose, this is not a rosy fragrance by any means at all. And that top note with the rose fades rather quickly from the splash. I don't have the EDP of this one. I've always wanted it, but I haven't picked it up. I describe most rose fragrances as woody and like a powdery floral. After that, we have the bay leaf. And bay leaf can be described, I've got a guy walking up to me, uh, be described as herby and slightly spicy. Howdy. How you doing? Good, doing real good. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I was trying to figure out what it, what it was. I was talking to the audience here. I got people people watching the video, watching the Pacific. I was trying to guess what kind of tree it might be or where it came from. Yeah, it does have some red in it in the bark. Yep. Bay leaf is herby and slightly spicy. Then after that is the vetiver. And the vetiver, we start getting into, into these heart notes. And the heart really carries on and stands out. Um, for me, the notes that are found in the heart really, really make up this fragrance in a big way. And it's like, even once we get down into the base, I still pick up on the heart. The, the heart really lingers in this one, and I like that. So we go rose, bay leaf, lemon myrtle. Oh, sorry, so I'm skipping over lemon myrtle. Just got a the guy over here is distracting me. They're hunting for driftwood. There's driftwood all over out here, of course, as you'll see in the B-roll. Lemon myrtle is a flower, and there's like 600 different species of it. another one that I've never tried the essential oil of. It's described as citrusy, which is why the flower is called a lemon. And then they say it has a little bit of a menthol type fragrance to it. It's grown all over the world, including here in the United States. We have one here. I don't, my wife and I were talking about it while we were driving here. We've always called it uh, corn flour, like the vegetable. And that's because it kind of smells like corn, but has a citrusy nuance to it. Then we start getting into the heart that I was talking about. The rose, the bay leaf, and the lemon myrtle make up the top. Vetiver. I love vetiver. I don't like it by itself. It's strong. But in fragrances like this one, I absolutely love vetiver. There's three different types of vetiver. This one, I would describe it as an earthy green masculine. And you'll see that this these heart notes, there's a there's a theme going on with it. This is a romantic, sensual fragrance. 
that don't let the rose at the top or the pitcher on the tub fool you. I was talking, I wore this fragrance, I'm drying out bad with this wind. Uh, talking it over with my wife coming here. It's very sensual and engaging. Uh, once you get into the heart, it's like almost carnal. Don't try this at home, kids. This razor is amazing for buffing. I love this razor. I have the Ascension Select and the Stainless Steel Ascension. I love both of them too, don't get me wrong. They're like two of my favorite modern razors. They're, they're, they're essentially the same, but sorry my nose is running. It's this damn wind and it's so cold. I'm gonna try not to sniffle. I know it's probably really gross. Hope I haven't been doing it too much. I just now noticed I was doing it. So we're getting into this bed of here, right? And these green earthy notes that I'll be talking about. Next we have white clover. White clover grows all over here in Western, North, in the Pacific Northwest. It's called white clover because it grows a white flower. And actually, years ago, like in the 50s and 60s, they were putting it in lawn seed mix and Oregon basically like the, the lawn seed capital of the world. We grow more grass seed here and probably more green grass, 420 grass, but I'm talking JB lawn grass than anywhere in the world. And you can see that in the white clover that's everywhere because back in the 50s and the 60s, I'm not sure why, I guess people thought it was pretty you know, and it was attractive and made for a nice lawn. But they were actually putting white clover seed in with their lawn mixes. I hate seeing clover. My, my backyard, I've always tried to maintain it. I've had troubles with it the last few years, but I don't like seeing clover in my lawn. However, it does smell amazing. Best way for me to describe it, sweet, green, and floral. That's where this fragrance is going as we get into this heart and work our way into the base. And the base notes really help carry these heart notes for quite a while. This, this fragrance has longevity. It's one of Doug's oldest fragrances. In fact, it goes all the way back to how to grow a mustache. It came out in those black three and a half ounce bottles. I never had one. I wasn't using Phoenix at that time. I got into Phoenix. Doug's products after how to grow a mustache. And Doug created this fragrance when he was still learning how to build a fragrance, when he was first crafting his perfumery art, if you will. And that's why when he finally got it where he wanted it. As you see on the sales page, he exclaimed, I don't know if he did it verbally or mentally, but I could so totally see him doing this. He, you know, was at last, and like he exclaimed it, that he was, you know, overjoyed and so exuberant that he's just like, finally, you know, he had it. Bet you can hear me over that time, huh? Got a little loud, a little carried away. It's cold, y'all, and I'm sniffling again. Sorry about that. So he had that, you know, eureka moment when he got the fragrance to where it is today. And like I said, it's back in the early days of him learning how to craft a fragrance. Because again, Phoenix artists and accoutrements, they do not buy their fragrances from other people. He, they take individual fragrances, they craft them, they blend them from hydrosols and absolutes very much like uh, alchemy. It's, 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 uh, I wanted to use the word witchcraft, but 
and that's just because I don't understand it, right? Just like the Puritans, they call things witchcraft that they didn't understand. But uh, after the white clover is cypress. And cypress is playing right along with that theme. Woody, evergreen, herbaceous. It can even be spicy. After that, we have uh, helichrysum, which is another flower. Dang, this is drying out fast in this wind. Helichrysum, fresh, earthy, herbaceous got a theme going on here right you guys see where this fragrance is going it's not don't let that rose fool you I did I, I didn't pick this one up till like three four years ago even though it had caught my attention way before that I still remember Nick shaves doing a video on it like eight or ten years ago I didn't see the video when it first came out I, I discovered it eight or so years ago I don't know but a long time ago and I put it off for years it was just like I was still learning how to appreciate fragrances I think maybe you know looking back and then ambrit and ambrit is ambery musky and has a slight animal scent to it and I mean that like in a good way for those who maybe don't know fragrances all that well when people talk about like musk fragrances or animal scents, it's scientifically proven that both males and females, that the human species as a whole is attracted to that animalistic, sweaty, dirty, sensual fragrance. You know, the, the smell of, I try to keep these PG. Um, as possible a copulation I think that's probably a good safe word right and so when I say animal like scent that's that's a compliment and you, you don't you don't pick it up anywhere in there I'm just talking about that's one of the ways that this fragrance is described amber the note of amber geranium citrusy fruity and a slight rose hint to it I don't pick up any rose in the bottom or in the heart, anywhere in the dry down. That's just, again, another way that geranium is described. This is a vetiver fragrance that has some floral tones to it. I love it. I, I really do. The final note is tobacco absolute. Woody, warm, mossy. Almost started to do my whole face. Just do a couple cleanups here before I turn into a popsicle. What a beautiful day, though. The, the, the Pacific Coast in Oregon does not get any better in January than this right here get away from the wind it's probably about 40 degrees 43 degrees with the wind it feels more like 35 degrees but the sunshine look at that blue sky hope it's all like you know picking up really well on the camera it's hard to tell in this light Floral and powdery. And one thing that's awesome about Tobacco Absolute is it's one of those fragrances that makes the other fragrances in. It's like tenacious. It's, it brings a tenacity to the other notes. And what I mean by that is it makes the other notes last longer. So the Tobacco Absolute 
takes this earthy fragrance and totally just grounds it. I think, in my opinion, it's one of the reasons why the fragrance lasts so long. You know, Doug calls his splashes aftershave colognes. And this Alphine, just like virtually all of his aftershave colognes that I have, it lasts 8 to 14 hours. And in fact, back in, back in the day, years ago, before Doug was making uh, EDPs and selling them, his answer to people when they'd asked for EDPs was that, you know, the cologne lasted for so long. And, you know, at first he didn't really get it, but he gave the people what he wanted, what we, what we wanted, and so now we have the EDPs. But that's one of the reasons why I decant 10 or 12 uh, of his aftershaves because they can be worn as a cologne and worn all day long. And I've never had any problems with them on uh, got my towel on any of my clothing or anything like that. In my opinion, there's not a better splash on the market. And in my opinion, when it comes to colognes, there's not a better cologne either. Long lasting, made with the best ingredients. I've talked about the difference between fragrance oils and essential oils before. I'll put the essential oils that are in this. Alphine is made of the best of the very best. And that's something that you can expect with all of Doug and Fran's aftershave clones. It's good stuff, Maynard. Damn straight. Damn skippy hippie. It's good stuff. Oh. When I first open it up, when you first smell it, you get... It's... Kind of spicy citrus. Oh, with some beautiful florals. And if you watch my content, you know I'm not a rose guy. And uh, Tokyo Rose really blew me away. Just because rose is in the name, I guess. You know, I don't know. One thing's for sure. My nose and my taste over the last five or eight years has grown and matured. And I know I'm probably not alone with that. I find that the star jelly and the splash complement each other wonderfully. Most of my sets, I own both the Splash and the Star Jelly. The Splash, the Splash has a little bit of menthol in it as does my star jelly. Yeah, I wanted to double check to make sure I wasn't thinking wrong. The splash does have just a, a kiss, just a touch of menthol. Not a lot, it's only a little. But it's just enough. Oh, damn fine shave. Well, I think I'm officially frozen now. My right leg's starting to shake. I didn't think it was going to be this cold. That, that wind really picked up. Alphine. Don't overlook it. If you've never tried it, grab yourself a sample. It's truly like, it's a PAA classic. And if you haven't tried it, you owe it to yourself to do so. One dollar. One dollar samples, guys. He also has like the little, like ten dollar bottle too. I'll put a picture of that right there. I want to thank you guys for joining me here on the Pacific Ocean. 
uh, my Astraeus brush came in the mail today. I'm gonna do a little intro video of that, and I can't wait to actually use it. I've got it in the car with me now, but I decided not to use it in this video. It's a little big things. Like just walking the beach today with my wife and our German Shepherd. It's just the three of us here today. Absolutely wonderful. Steel Doug's uh, mantra again, it's only shaving. Don't take it seriously. Have fun with it. It's a little big things. Life's too short for drama. Y'all take care. Welcome to the B-roll. Out there, that's the uh, what we call the North North Jetty, the Sayusla River's North Jetty. I'm using this tree as like my table or counter. I grabbed an extra log and I stacked it on top of the tree to get the perfect height for my tripod and mirror. My table down here, I'm using my wet shaving store bowl for whipping up my lather. I have my stainless steel. Yeah, buddy. And I got my little stool that my son got me for Christmas over here. Hi, pup. Hi, rando dog. Hi. graveyard, a sea of driftwood. And the entire beach in this area is like this. The entire Oregon coastline is not like this. Just this stretch here where I am. Of course, someone stuck that one in the ground like that. So right here, I'm standing on the wall of the jetty. Shaved way out there. It's a boat or something. the camera won't pick it up to my left so I'm standing on the jetty you see the jetty goes way out and it goes all the way inland behind me and across the way you can see the other part of the jetty so this is where the Sayusla River is coming into Damn good fishing in the Sayusla. Just about any river in Oregon, really, if you're an outdoorsman like that. If you're still watching my B roll, I want to say I love you. I love you a long time. Out there, up there in the distance, you can see that old Coast Guard tower modern tech i don't think they use it anymore maybe for training but i've been here probably a dozen times in the last 10 years or so you know, i've never seen anyone use it but 
That doesn't mean anything, right? It's a little big, thanks, gentlemen and ladies.